Battle of the Network shows. Join Rick Brooks and Mike Kogel as they explore the TV of the 70s and 80s through hand-picked episodes of their favorite and not-so-favorite series. Welcome to another Battle of the Network Show's bonus episode. Here with Rick, of course. Hey, everybody. And today we're going to talk briefly about a, a special day in our lives. It really was. It's been a few months, but I think the memories are still fresh. And anyone who's listened to the show regularly knows how we feel about Robert Pine, star of Low and Brow commercial, co-star of Chips, all-around great character actor, inspiration for our Genius Award and the baddies, and we had an opportunity to meet him. So how did this all come about? Well, it was interesting. Uh, there happens to be a regular memorabilia sports memorabilia show and one of the the centerpieces of of the show that that comes into town several times a year is appearances by numerous former athletes and the occasional celebrities thrown in there's an admission fee generally you go in and you buy tickets to get the autograph from the athlete mostly athletes yeah and i happen to be curious about oh i wonder who's going to be you know coming to the this uh, particular show when this happened and i think it was what like the night before literally (laughs) yeah the night before, I, I looked and I, I saw the, the list of uh, luminaries that were going to be there. Yeah. And I saw that Robert Pine was one of them. Right. And I contacted you immediately. So not only Robert Pine, but Larry Wilcox and Eric Estrada. Yes. And we didn't meet Eric Estrada. We didn't re- meet Larry Wilcox either. No, he was there. but He was there. <laughs> <laughs> and there was like some other celebrity. Tony Todd. Tony Todd, yeah. Yeah. There were there were more throughout the uh, the weekend uh, it was a, it was a two day show. Yeah, and we went later in the days. In fact, yeah, we went in the period where you didn't have to pay the admission <laughs> fee. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so actually, most of the athletes were gone by that time. Yeah, and they were they were also sequestered off into a different area. Yeah, that's right. So they, we didn't we saw a list of them, but we didn't see them. And they were, I mean, uh, they're big names. Yeah, like Hall of Famers and in, in Reggie baseball, Jackson, football. And, yeah, Robin Neal wasn't that one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he was. Because that was also you emailed a joke first. <laughs> Robin Yount, and you hadn't right. even figured out the Robert Pine part. Yeah. But yeah, so you sent me the email, and I was like, well, we got to do this. So we did, and we did have to pay to get an autograph. Not a lot, and we got an autograph picture. Yeah, each of us did. And I think when we first got there, he wasn't at the table. Correct. But then we kind of circled around. We're looking at stuff, and then we saw him. And we both had the same idea. I think you had it more, which was not to be obnoxious. Yeah. Not to ask him for an interview, right, or uh, really anything like that. Just yeah, I think we really just wanted to kind of have that that moment and kind of get the the appreciation and and you know really just kind of on a really kind of a sincere level is how much we like that uh, the low and brow commercial especially. Yeah, and I know knew that I would have been content just kind of sharing that with him, right. and, you know, mentioning it, but I had no expectation of getting anything out of it other than you know the autograph picture and really just kind of like hey let's, let's tell this guy that we've raved about. Yeah. And it's been such a big part of the podcast. Let's sh- kind of share this this with him. Yeah. And you did share that. And he was like, oh, yeah, I did do that. Yeah. That was yeah he, he kind of chuckled and said, boy, that was so long ago. And he yeah. he, he, he laughed. He, you know, he, yeah. <laughs> he remembered it. But it, he it, said it was right before he started Chips. Yeah. And we told him it was on YouTube. He said, oh, I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah, yeah. So I hope he did. Yeah, I hope so, too. <laughs> I think we got the impression that he, he didn't have specific, he probably didn't have specific right. memories of that, that shoot. Yeah. So... No, we did not ask him about Jimmy Valvano. No. <laughs> <laughs> we did not ask him, you know, how he got into character, and we didn't share our whole theory about, no. you know, the, the Lowenbrow commercial yeah. and, and what his character was. Well, we did tell him we had the podcast, and yeah. and, uh, and then I, I printed up his, his Batty Award, yeah, uh, which was for Best Male Performance, and, and also mentioned appreciation for Inspiring the Genius Award and all of that. And, right. You know, did it up like a nice certificate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's pretty cool. He, he, and gave it to him in an envelope, and he, he smiled and yeah. asked where he could find the podcast. I don't know if he did. Yeah. But, and you know, because we were trying not to be pushy, but also nervous or whatever, I just, well, that's, you know, the name was on the top. I'm like, that's the name. You can just search that. Yeah. And I could have told him exactly where to find it. But, you know, I don't know what his technical skills are. No. Some people that age have none. Right. Some people are very savvy, so yeah. But it was nice, and sure, we would. It would be great to be able to talk to him on the podcast. But yeah, I think he. Uh, I think he got a kick out of it. Yeah, and appreciated it. And, and I guarantee you, we're the only ones that that weekend that that talked to him about the Lord Brown commercial. <laughs> <laughs> right, unless one of our listeners, this podcast I listen to, they talked. Yeah, now that would be great. 
<laughs> it would be. Yeah, and now it seems like, because we wandered around after it and really wasn't a lot going on. There's like one other guy talking to them, mm-hmm. to him and Larry Wilcox. We probably could have hung around and talked to them. Yeah. But there was like the handler guy. I didn't like the handler guy. Yeah. Like he, he seemed like he didn't want people hanging around. Right. I, I, I it's got, like there's nothing going on. I got a vibe from him that, that was discouraging, yeah. lingering. Yes. Now, maybe if we had, had gotten a picture from him and Larry Wilcox, maybe yeah. we could have, but... Maybe, but... I don't know. You know, it wasn't... It just wasn't busy enough for that. Like, I've been... A couple other times I've done something like that. You get it. Like, there, there's either a line behind you or... Yeah. Whatever, if you've had to stand in a, a queue of lines or it's a photo op thing or something, you kind of get it, but this is the end of the show. And, right. And they weren't doing much, and it would have been... I'm sure they would have been happy to talk to someone rather than just sit there. Yeah. And talk to each other. Right. Now, it would have been weird to get the autographs from Robert Pine and then sit there and talk to Larry Wilcox yeah. for an hour and not it would have pay him anything. Now, we could have talked about, like, the the roller derby episode yes. of Chips and, like, the whole uh, actors for animals and, and right. actors yeah. and other people for animals. Yeah. That would have been kind of interesting, and that's kind of what I, I could have done. But I think part of it, too, is that, like, if he would have said, oh, yeah, the Lowenbrow commercial, and, boy, that Mo- Michael Moriarty, he was a real trip yeah. to work with and stuff. <laughs> Then we could have stood and talked specifically about that. Yeah. But there's only so much that we could really talk about the podcast and, and that, that Lauren Brow ad. So, I, you know, we kind of got in and out of there a little bit. But. Right. And, you know, they're probably tired. Yeah. yeah. They flew out from L.A., presumably. Right. And, you know, they're just in a convention, yeah. convention hall or expo center or whatever it's called. And so it was good. And then we went and had pizza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was <laughs> or, very cool. whatever we had. But. And plus, I, I just love the fact that at least there's at least one person out there that actually has their physically batty award that we gave a batty award yes. to. Yes. Yeah. And hopefully we'll get more opportunities for that. Yeah. If we pay attention to these things. And Could be. Or at least. Actually at least go to them. Meet some of these uh, batty award winners. But yeah. Yeah. I was, I was very uh, thrilled by the experience and it was cool. Yep. And good for the show, and I feel we were representing our whole audience there. Right? Yeah, and it, it wasn't a, you know, one of those where you meet your hero and they're a jerk things. So yeah, no, he seemed like a very nice man. He's very gracious. Yeah, so all in all, a good experience. I'm glad you looked that up, and I'm glad I insisted that we go. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it it definitely helped. Like it, it, it was kind of a symbiotic thing there. I think yeah. you you kind of prodding me, you know, convinced us to get to go do it. Yeah. So and I just happened to stumble upon it the night before. It's it's, it's amazing. Yeah, so we wanted to share that with our listeners. Hopefully, you'll have a similar experience or have had a similar experience with any, uh, not just Robert Pine, <laughs> whoever <laughs> you're, so, the people you want to talk to. <laughs> but if you do meet him, mention yeah. the podcast. Yes, please do. Uh, <laughs> maybe it'll ring a bell with him, and uh, you know, we'll find out. But that's the story of meeting Robert Pine. And maybe we'll get another opportunity sometime to get off our duffs and figure out how you contact people to interview them. Sure. Apparently, you can do that. What? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I have to look that one up. Uh, you don't have to be a professional journalist. What? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe you do. <laughs> mm. I don't know. You probably do have to yeah, have some kind of reason for Yes, well. <laughs> Dear Robert Pine's agent. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to talk to Robert Pine. Can you arrange that? Yes. And uh, and also, let's stress, uh, no offense to Larry Wilcox, who was an uh, no. essential part of Chips as well, but... Was, really, the moment was all about Robert Pine. For yeah, us. and you know, saving a little money. Yeah, it was pretty expensive. We had to buy pizza. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, have we mentioned before that the the podcast is totally free? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, it would have been cool if we had hung out and we could have gone and gotten a steak with him. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember him saying, "Do they even make low and brown anymore?" Yeah, that, that's right. Yeah. yeah, we're not sure. We don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe he was thinking, I, I could go for it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bro. He looked pretty fit. He probably doesn't eat a lot of steak. No, no. Probably avoids the red meat. And yeah. Only the occasional beer, maybe. Right. But when he does, though, yeah, he does them in tandem. Right. <laughs> and he enjoys it. Okay. Well, we'll talk to you again soon on Battle of the Network shows. Possibly about Robert Pine again. You never know. It's a good chance. Yeah. Now stay tuned for a special encore presentation of our Lowenbrow episode. Welcome to another Battle of the Network shows. I'm Mike. I'm here with Rick, and today we're veering off from our usual pattern. We're going to actually talk about a commercial, one that uh, Rick introduced me to about a year ago from when we're recording this, and I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about it, then we'll, of course, play the audio. The video will be on the blog. Yeah. And 
we'll go from there. It's a commercial for uh, Lowenbrow. It's, it's, it's a beer ad. It's 30 seconds. I feel that it may be one of the best ads of all time. I think it suggests something about, uh, you know, America, about all of us, about guy culture, and it's got, you know, celebrity. It's, it's got everything. But yeah. let's just let everybody listen to it, and then we'll, uh, we'll break it down after. All right. Here it goes. Here's two good friends. Tonight is kind of special. Hey, where you been? Well, it wasn't easy getting tickets for this game. Hey, Bob. Eddie, I you know exactly what I want. I want the biggest steak you got in a bottle of Lowen Brown. Steak and Lowen Brown. Dolan, you're a genius. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be Lowen Brown. Here's to the chef. Here's to the bartender. There you go. Yeah, now, is this not a, a great commercial? I think it might, I, I agree, it might be one of the best commercials ever. Certainly, I'm going to say the best beer commercial ever. Yeah. You know, you, I know you got your taste great, less fillings. Mm -hmm. You got your sp Spuds McKenzie. Yeah, you do, yeah. Uh, Clydesdales. Clydesdales, like yeah. Like cute animals, things like that. Yeah, yeah. tearjerkers from Budweiser, but yeah. nothing comes. What to, was up? Yeah, yeah. I almost forgot that one. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but this isn't. I mean, and 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 seriously, it, it's it's a good ad because it's not just it's not just pushing like making you want to drink Lone Brow, but it's it's suggesting like a it's aspirational. It, I mean, it's it intending is. to like sell a lifestyle and think, hey, man, this this makes me think of like good things, things that make me happy. And it's kind of like a little short story. Yeah, it suggests like so much more even than yeah. you see in the thirty seconds, I believe. Right. Just Des describe some of the visuals. Yeah. Well, they're they're. We're opening up in like a very crowded, like hot spot, and what I'm yeah. assuming this is New York City. Right. Yeah, exactly. I assume it's New York City. I also assume it's like fall or winter. Yeah, yeah. It's like so, a jam-packed, uh, you know, bar restaurant kind yeah, of thing. It's really reasonably nice place. It might only be like six o'clock, but just that feeling of the way, you know, when it gets dark. It, yeah, it feels like it yes. might be raining, uh, and in walks our hero, Bob Dolan. Yes, uh, Dolan, uh, yeah. Robert Pine from uh, Chips, of course. Yeah, Robert, the great, <laughs> the great Robert, Robert Pine, Pine. Yeah. father of Chris Pine. Yeah. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with him, I don't know how you can be, but uh, you know, I feel like he's in the mold of uh, in the Harrison Ford sphere of kind of actor. <laughs> I'm, I'm intrigued by this. You know, I mean, more of a TV version okay. of him, but yeah. just kind of, right. you know, like. That era, Harrison Ford, not grumpy Harrison Ford. Okay. But, you know, a little bit, uh, a little cool, maybe a hint of cowboy. I don't know, just something about him. Well, he's definitely meant to suggest, like, kind of your, 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 your a guy's guy kind of thing. Yeah. And it were, it, and I mean just Robert Pine in general, but, yeah, yeah in this commercial, too. Right. Just, yeah. Yeah, so they, they, they cast well, is what you think. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's sort of like an indeterminate age kind of uh, male Right. You know, well, we'll get to that in a minute, but I guess to, if, if you want to yeah. go through. So he's. Well, and there's a group of guys. Well, he, he comes in. You see briefly him uh, taking off his overcoat and handing it to someone, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, but it's so crowded, it's hard to see. Yeah. And this is a place that's got a bar, but it's also got these, the like, not really leather, but, you know, the curved booths. Yeah, that, the guys can huddle, huddle yeah. in. And, yeah. Like I feel, and I, I feel like it smells like tobacco and, oh, and sure. booze and, yes, and exactly. steak and <laughs> just, you know. Yeah. And there are women there, too. It's not just the guys, but it's like, yeah. that And I feel like these guys, they all work together. Yeah. And he's just, he he had a mission, so he's a little late. Yeah, so. He sits down and, uh, you know, as you heard, that they're asking where he was and he was getting tickets to some game. Yeah. It wasn't easy getting tickets to the, the big game. No, and I feel like yeah, you had to go across town. Uh, like maybe you left work a little early. You had to go across town to get these tickets. <laughs> right from some shady uh, reseller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't. It, it didn't sound like he got them from like his his cousin or, or somebody that at work just no. happened to have an extra pair. He actually had to go to a scalper probably. Yeah, right, and maybe you had to go to Staten Island or something. <laughs> <laughs> Staten Island. Yeah, he, something he's, the subway or a cab. He's it, weird. He doesn't yeah. want to hear. I mean, they're they're kind of busting his chops for being so late. But yeah. hey, he's like, he, he doesn't really want to hear about. It. I mean, he, he's been through something. Yeah, you know, just some, even if it's just navigating the, the traffic or the subway or whatever. Yeah, yeah he's just been the on way a he sits in the booth. Even it's like, yeah, oh, it's like, thank oh, God. thank, yeah, <laughs> exactly, thank God. And yeah. so, 
Uh, and their fashions are all of, of a 70s kind yeah, of. Yeah, it's 1977. Like his, his jacket's got a kind of a plaid thing going on, I think. Yeah. Next to him, you might recognize also Michael Moriarty. Yeah. Uh, known from film and television and going a little bit wacky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and he's like in a powder blue suit. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a guy, a guy in the middle who, like, uh, when we've talked about it before, like when when Dolan's not around, I feel like that guy's the boss. Oh, the Jim Valvano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks yeah, <laughs> exactly like Jim Valvano. Like you know, but when Dolan shows up, you know. Yeah. Forget or that guy might still behave like he's yeah the head of the group, but everybody knows like Dolan's so cool. And, yeah, Dolan's their leader, I think, but uh, the Jim Valvano, Baba Booey kind of uh, yeah. guy, he's kind of like the wise guy and, and maybe the loudest of them. Yeah. He, he's like the one that, that always is kind of like the squeaky wheel. Yeah. And but Dolan's like the real leader. And, yeah. yeah. And then there's another guy. Yeah, the, the poor nondescript guy. That right. He's just kind of, he's kind of like the fourth one in the group. He's kind of like lucky that. Yeah. And we know, too, this is not their first time at this place. Yeah. Because the waiter comes up. Right. Says hi, Bob. That's how we know he's Bob. Yeah, it's it's a place where everybody knows their knows their name and gives him like, yeah, like a you know like a three foot menu. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Who knows what's on that menu? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Dolan knows what he wants. Yeah, he cuts him off. He doesn't even need to look at the menu. Yeah, he's been he's been thinking about this probably for the whole time when he got the tickets. He's it's, this is what's going to make this right. worthwhile. Yeah, I get the feeling that this might even be more appealing to him right now than that game. Yeah. I mean, they still got a game to go to. I think he went to get the tickets just so he could have an excuse. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Like, you know, maybe as a family, I don't know, but you can't can't always afford steak and loaf, bro. No, and a a game, and a big game. Yeah, and a big game. I mean, just think about this, really. I mean, these these are four guys. Maybe they're they're part part of it is they're getting away from their wives or whatever and their families, but they're a night in the town, and for some reason I'm assuming, well... It's it's the middle of the week. It's a weeknight. Yeah. They're coming from work. Right. So I mean, this is kind of you know this is a great way to unwind. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's a Friday. Maybe they don't have work the next day. But still, it's kind of a big deal probably for all right. these guys to be out here. Yeah. And and maybe when he started on his journey, he just thought, well, you know, I'll I'll have a, maybe a burger and a beer. Yeah. And then it got it became such an event just right. getting the tickets. <laughs> he worked More he like, no, oh, forget this. I'm, yeah. You know, burgers not going to do it. Yeah. So he doesn't even have to look at the menu. Yeah. Yeah. No, and he, and he doesn't even ask for, like, a specific steak. He, he just wants, wants, give me the biggest steak you got and a bottle of low and broth. Right, yeah. So he, what kind of, what What do you think they're going to bring him? Do you think they're going to bring him, like, a... I think it's going to be, like, a Fred Flintstone kind of... <laughs> <laughs> like a Brontosaurus steak <laughs> yes. that'll tip over the whole table and, and their right. low and broth will go flying. Yeah. It might even be a terrible cut of meat. Yeah, they might like just the size say, okay. of the steak seems more important to him than well, the quality. Here, here's where like it might be easy to assume like okay, this guy you know they're, they're going to think he's a jerk and just give him some crappy like you know Ponderosa restaurant chop steak or something yeah. like that. I don't know about that. They know him. They've established they know him. They know no. him so I don't think they're going to screw him over. No, I don't think so. I mean, they might not give him like a you know the most tender kind of thing, but yeah, you know they'll probably give him at least a, a semi decent thing. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, I think it'll be good cut of steak yeah just, and you think that dolan is going to get really get the like the biggest one and do you think like the other three guys are going to get upset when they realize like hey dolan's got a steak like twice as big as the ones we got uh i i think they'll get ones that are you know within shooting distance okay but okay. i think it'll also match the pecking order that's yeah, true true so the jim belvano baba Booey guy yeah he'll probably get the second biggest one yeah Mor- moriarty will get the third biggest one and the other guy will get like a yeah. I don't know. Just like a flat iron steak. Yeah. <laughs> With even a little gristle on it. Yeah. <laughs> that guy. And, and he doesn't have, he's, he's the quiet guy. He's, he's, yeah. Boy. And, he, and and he's also thinking, I kind of like Grolsch better than Lowen Brown. You know, <laughs> he better not say it out loud, though. No. He's, he's, he's got like the fun one. Bottle and the thing. He's one cool hire in accounting away from being out of this group, you know? Yeah. And then they'll just let, let Brad from accounting, like, pal around with him sometimes. So. Right. Yeah. This this guy's he might be on thin ice, but eh, maybe not. You yeah. know, I like to think that these guys are, are good friends outside of you know work and, and I think so. he probably brings somebody to the group that yeah none of the rest of them do yeah maybe even might if it's be like just access to something that they want or <laughs> right uh, maybe he's got the best car you know yeah 
Yeah, he's, he's he's got something. He's contributing something. Yeah, and do you, what kind of? Uh, I'm assuming they're going to see like a basketball game for some reason. I mean, it's uh, probably basketball yeah, or ninth, hockey. Because football. Yeah, that would be such a. It, as we're assuming, it's New York. Yeah. Like even, oh well, and, and probably in the middle of the week. So and. The, yeah, I'm thinking like the old garden, or the old Madison yeah. Square Garden, and they're like right across the street. It's, right. This place is like very, within be walking distance. Like, that might, you know, because it's, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so it, it's it's going to be a good game, and then, yeah, you know, they're going to be uh, they're gonna be loaded up. Late, late 70s, right? So Yeah, 1977 the, could be the... Is that post-Knicks at their height, or... Yeah, uh, like the early 70s, probably. But, yeah, the Knicks probably would have been a, you know, yeah. they were... They weren't a joke. I mean, yeah, it'd be probably cool to see the Knicks playing the Celtics or something. You know, a nice, yeah, couple of big Eastern teams yeah. and maybe even courtside. Yeah, I mean, maybe it, yeah, maybe it wasn't like standing room only. Maybe Dolan was like yeah. getting great seats. Right. Yeah. Uh, hopefully vetted. You know, ho- hopefully they don't go there and find out they got counterfeit tickets or something and spoil the whole evening. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd like to think Dolan's smarter than that. Dolan, you're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, yeah, they would they would really turn on him if that were the case. They'd He's like, just, hey, we still got steak and low and brown. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, Dolan, you're a genius. <laughs> They'd probably just go right back across the street and get yeah. hammered, you know, just have right. some more low and brow and, you know, yeah. get some, you know. Yeah, what can we get you, Bob? I want another big. <laughs> I want the second biggest steak you got and another bottle oh, of low and brow. A picture of low and brow. <laughs> keep bringing the low and brow. Yeah, <laughs> just keep that low and brow coming. Yeah. And uh, I don't want to necessarily abandon these guys yet, but no. we should mention that uh, the, the awesome song, yeah. the Let It Be Low and Brow, that was one of the best jingles of all time, too. Yeah. And it was actually Arthur Prysock, uh, you know, I found out years... I always assumed it was Lou Rawls singing that Low and Brow song. Yeah. He's a butt man. Yeah. <laughs> I should have known better. Who, I really who should is have Arthur Prysock? He was, you know, it wasn't Lou Rawls, I'll tell you no. that. He was like kind of a, a similar type singer. I mean, his his voice is, is similar to me. and every, it, It's one of those things where like, yeah. I mean, he wasn't like a huge recording star. And I think maybe he's probably best known for, for doing this. But there's no shame in that as far as I'm concerned. But it's one of those things like once you realize that it's not Lou Rawls, it's like, oh, okay, then you, you can tell more of the difference. But, yeah. you know, especially as a, as a kid, I, I thought, you know, hey, that, that's Lou Rawls singing the Lowenbrow yeah. song. And that was a... His voice, it sounds... That, his voice in that song sound like beer <laughs> sound like beer like a and nice, steak like beer a nice heavy beer yeah. yeah yeah these are these are guys guys and it's like kind of a guy singer you know yeah you know that they'll put the, put the whole i mean there are a lot of these low and brow commercials and they're all like you know uh, pitching guys. this idea of camaraderie like guys being guys and just, just and also being good like friends. low and brow being special yeah tonight is kind of special That's, something about low and brow that yeah that Makes it a special night. You're not getting the cheap stuff. It's low and brown. Yeah. Not just any beer. Yeah. And uh, you know, I should should mention too that one of the the big things for low and brown and me uh, growing up was Chris Berman. Uh, there was like an Orioles uh, outfielder named John Lowenstein. Uh-huh. And every time uh, Chris Berman would do his name in the highlights, he'd call him John. Let it be Lowenstein. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. You know, back in the days when, when Chris Berman was doing that was really funny cool. names. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, so yeah, I, I loved uh, the Low and Brow uh, commercials and, and and yeah, that's what uh, I I do want to come back to these guys, uh, but uh, well, let's stay on the guys and then come back. To yeah, yeah. The fact that there are more of these. Yeah. Um, first of all, the we love the Robert Pine wanting the steak and the bottle of Low and Brow, like how he says it. Yeah, not a bottle He's of voice. not bottle of Low and yeah. Brow. Bottle of bottle of Low and Brow. Yeah. <laughs> and and he is he's like sitting like kind of. Sl- slid down in the booth a little bit yeah but his hands like he uses his hands like when he says the biggest steak right he's, he's like making it very clear what he yeah. wants he's a this is a guy that knows what he wants that's part of right. why he's the and leader the way, and he's looking over at the waiter like yeah. kind of you know his yeah. head cocked it's, yeah like you know. uh, don't waste your time here buddy yeah i know exactly what i want right and then all the other guys just fold up their menus yeah they're like well game over you know yeah and then uh, the, i i love both the way the actor does it, but also the, kind of the way they cut the guy saying, Dolan, you're a genius. But, yeah. I mean, he looks at everybody. He's like, Dolan? And then he looks around again, and he's got this, you know, 
grin. Yeah, big uh, big grin. <laughs> yeah. A big a stink genius. eating grin. Yeah, a stink eating grin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. I, I, yeah. I, I stepped on you doing it there. No, but yeah, it's, it's good. Uh, yeah. You're a genius. I mean, yeah, he's yeah, just... These guys are just so self- satisfied with themselves. I mean, it's like they finally hit. It's like they've hit the meaning of life. Right. You know, like who knows what's going on at home? Maybe they all have like failing mar- marriages and they're behind on their mortgages, mm-hmm. and maybe you know they're they're in thin ice at their jobs. But for tonight, right. at least for like this night, they got you know sports, they got beer, low, you know. Yeah. What else could they ask for, really? And the next day when they go to work, or the next Monday, or whatever. Yeah. They're still going to be talking about. It. Yeah. Like somebody, you know, someone who knows that went to the game. How was the game? Like, ah, the game was fine, but let me tell you. Yeah. Dolan came in. <laughs> we were all looking at the menus. I don't know. Yeah. You know, Frank's thinking about getting fish. It's... <laughs> <laughs> and you know which guy is Frank. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then he just says, he lays it out. Yeah. He doesn't even have to look at a menu. Yeah. Biggest steak you got in a bottle of low bro. Yeah. yeah. That was it. And everybody at work is like, ah, you know. Dolan. Man, that Dolan. He's a genius. Dolan might have even gotten a promotion out of this. And the, the other guy, the, the guy who said the genius line, he's he's making hay out of that, too. He's yeah. Like, and you know what I said. Yeah. <laughs> right. Dolan, you're a genius. <laughs> he is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He'd be <laughs> talking up his whole role. In the, right. Not, not taking credit away from that Dolan. That guy, by the way, is in sales. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it's what totally, they're selling, but totally, yeah, that guy's in sales. Yeah, and uh, the one guy, Frank's an accountant, or Moriarty. He's I don't know, he's like middle management. Yeah, kind. Yeah, and, and what do you think, Dolan? I mean, I, I'm thinking Dolan might parlay this into like rising up in the ranks, but maybe he's yeah. already. Do you think these guys are more or less equal, but in different departments? But like in the social group, Dolan's the leader. But what about at work? I don't think they're probably equal. Yeah. Yeah, these guys could even maybe carpool together under certain circumstances. I think Dolan like. I don't know. Yeah, they could. I, I mean, if it's new, well, maybe they might be coming in from Jersey. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. You know, they they get together. Frank for, drives because he's got the good car. Yeah, yeah. They get together for barbecues, like uh, you know, during the summer. Yeah. Every now and then, they they they've tried having vacations together. Yeah. yeah. You know, maybe a little swapping action. Uh, the, maybe a couple of years ago that <laughs> yeah. they they quickly put that behind That's them right. and then just yeah. decided to just stick to the going to the big games. And, yeah. Right, but uh, yeah, these it's a good crew. I, I, I'm very intrigued by by Dolan. Uh, yeah, and and what he might be up to. But g- g- guy's a thinker and he's decisive. Yeah. So those are good I think qualities. He's a problem he's, solver. Yeah. He's that guy. Yeah. He's like the, you know, when people have trouble, they go to Dolan. Yeah, and he's a straight shooter too. Yeah. That's one of the things they he's like a straight about shooter, it. Yeah. And, and and I like how I mean we're assuming that they have some kind of white collar work, but just the way he says that. It's, Biggest steak you got, and a bottle of low and brow. I mean, it's yeah. it's just blue collar enough to be accessible. You know, like these aren't. They're like blue collar guys who've made it white collar. Yeah, it's it's well, or what we used to call the middle class, which yeah. used to exist in America. <laughs> right. That's one of the things that's great about this ad. I mean, yeah. it's it's guys that that can afford to to get these expensive courtside tickets. Yeah. To this huge game. Right. That we keep building up as the more yeah. we go on. <laughs> they can afford steak and low and brow. They're not even worried about the price. Yeah. I mean, I hope. It's not every day. Right. But they got to manage their money. Yeah, but every can, now and then you can have. Go out and treat themselves. Yeah. yeah. And you know they're having more than one low and brow there. And when they go to the game, I don't know if they have low and brow at the yeah. garden, but they're they're getting beers and hot dogs when they go to the game. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are, right. are, are doing the town. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna be. Uh, they're gonna be. They're gonna be an interesting state the next morning. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, yeah. shouldn't have had that hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> the, you think? I I I, I want to think that I hope Dolan didn't like abuse this and and go into the you know to the concession stand and go. I know exactly what I want. <laughs> Give me the biggest hot dog you, you got, got in a in a bottle in a, of in a souvenir cup full of low and brown. That we don't have low and brown. Yeah, and and you know even uh, Valvano's like uh, Dolan. Yeah. Really, it was it was great at uh, you know Pete's across the street, but let's not try to recreate that. Right? Yeah, I let's assume that didn't happen. Yeah, no, we gotta assume Dolan's always on his game. Yeah, or even like uh, you know they're sitting in the stands and some guy comes by with uh, peanuts and you know cotton yeah. candy or whatever, and Dolan's hey hey stop stop listen, listen. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest bag of peanuts you got <laughs> and a stick of cotton candy. <laughs> 
Peanuts Look and at, cotton candy. <laughs> Dolan. <laughs> You're a genius. genius. And what you do, yeah. you put the peanuts in the cotton candy. Yeah. So then you get some crunch along with the... Yeah. You know what? Yeah. We're kind of joking about that, but <laughs> like I said, Dolan, that kind of fits with his thing as a problem. So Dolan's a guy, well, we know that he, he knows how to get the tickets. Yeah. Dolan's a guy that knows things. Right. He knows, you know, what to exactly what to order in a restaurant. He knows exactly which overcoat to get and, and wear in a yeah. night like this. He knows how to, you know, do what God knows what to, to get the, the tickets to the big game. Dolan, is, I'm sure, is the guy that, that picked this place. Yeah. And he was the one that went there before all, all four right. of them got going. You know, Dolan was the yeah. one that was, he was it's all like, over this. We're going to Larry's. Yeah. You know, someone, <laughs> Frank. Yeah, poor Frank. Like, Larry's? Yeah. I gotta go to Larry's again. Again? I, like, want, I kind of want Italian. Yeah. Ah, like, you don't want to tell you before a basketball game. Yeah, we, Let me tell you, you, you we're going to be hanging out all night. We don't want a garlic breath. Yeah. You know, and, uh, but then at the game, too, I think, you know, the Knicks got in some trouble. Yeah. The coach walked over. Yeah. <laughs> Here's what you do. Yeah, yeah. You get the biggest player you got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And you do a bottleneck defense. I don't yeah. know what that is. It is just, you bottleneck them. Yeah, so Dolan probably knows basketball, too. Yeah. Like, he's, like, throughout the whole game, he's giving them, like, little insider bits and stuff. And, right. And, but he's not, like, a like a blowhard about it. No, no, no. He's he probably He actually cool. knows. And I, I bet, you know, probably occasionally, not all the time, but occasionally, to make the game a little bit more interesting, Yeah. he's got a little something riding on it, you know? Yeah. So he, he gets these little tips and stuff, and he right. passes them on it, and maybe every now and then he'll help the guys and tell them, look... You know, uh, he'll give him a little tip on who to bet on or whatever. You know, like like take the Knicks and the points or you know. Yeah, he, he's he's just that kind of guy. He is. I wish I were more like Dolan. I do too. I mean, I man. mean, I don't need to eat steak. We know now. You know, I mean, Dolan probably died. <laughs> yeah, smart. <laughs> Dolan didn't live to a right old age. <laughs> but boy, did he enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Well, I mean, it probably wasn't just a steak. He probably had like a, a baked potato, like smothered with butter, and yep. you know, and, and everything, and, and who knows what else, and eh, maybe like the token vegetable, but yeah, he, isn't it the baked potato? Like a token, like green vegetable. Okay. Like maybe he got uh, like uh, you know, like green beans or something. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. You know, it might have just been <laughs> steak and starch. Right. <laughs> Only two things you need in life. Yeah. Wait, like, three things you need in life. Steak, starch, and low and brow. Low and brow, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, these those guys uh Meanwhile Frank is is uh, you know, retired and living a great life in Florida and Yeah, very content. Yeah. Right. Because he, he got his uh, he got his health together. Yeah, and he probably like they probably got like uh he's got a group of four guys that they go to the coffee shop and, and he acts like, he's probably like the leader of that group, right, like yeah. these old retirees. Yeah. And he's basically like taking everything he learned from Dolan and acting yeah. like it's his own stuff. Right. So this is like the best time of his life. Give me the biggest croissant you have. <laughs> and a cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah. Croissants and coffee. Yeah. Frank, you're a genius. <laughs> Frank sits there beaming. Yeah. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about my friend Bob? Yeah. Yeah. He was a genius. Yeah, but when he tells it, it's like yeah. he was a, you know, he was probably the, the one yeah. that was the, the genius exactly. even back then. Right, yeah. 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 Like, Frank, how do you know all this stuff? Ah. There was one time I went to get tickets for a game and yeah. just, you know, yeah. it was, I came in, I just knew what I wanted. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you I know, saved the whole night. This guy Dolan was going to get fish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Fish. <laughs> I mean, that was in the day when you could eat steak all the time. Yeah. And then, of course, we eat fish. But, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I could definitely see myself hanging out with these guys and, and yeah. going to a basketball game at the garden <laughs> with them. It sounds like a, like a pretty cool night. Yeah. yeah. And the steak and Lohenbrow, hey, I don't, I, don't, you know, I don't know much about the Lohenbrow, but a good steak sounds pretty good. Yeah. So there are some, yeah, a whole series of these. At least one more features both Robert Pine and Michael Morardi. It's a skiing one. We need to look at that one again. I think just for our own sake, because I swear to God, someone calls him Bob in that <laughs> one too. That's the one where he plays the prank. Like everyone's, it's two guys. It's him and Moriarty yeah. and two women. 
Yeah. And they can't find him on the ski hill, and he's already in the lodge drinking low and brown. Right. They're all, like, uh, worried sick about him. Yeah. They're, like, they send out, like, a rescue party and, and right. like, an APB for this guy, and yeah. uh, it turns out the guy's been sitting there. Yeah, it's, like, a ski chalet, and he's up in the window, like, Yeah, he's, hey. he's, he's, been, <laughs> he's been sitting by the fire drinking just, low and brown the whole time. Yeah. Once again, Dolan, he's, <laughs> you're a jerk. <laughs> Dolan's always one step ahead of everybody. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, but, yeah, it's like. And there's one where Michael Moriarty, he's really the, the threat. <laughs> and so. another guy are running. Oh, yeah. Like, at, I, I can't even figure out where they're, you know, they're at night, and they're just like, they need to go another mile or something. And Yeah. But. It's going to be worth it because they're going to get a low and brow. <laughs> yeah, I guess that was probably like at the height of like when jogging, jogging. as a craze, yeah. as a health craze, you know. So uh, like two guys jogging, you know, you wouldn't have to have a set time. You just go out and do it, you know, it's just uh, something you do. Yeah. Yeah, and have that sweet low and brow yeah. waiting for you. Uh, and then there's one where a guy on the beach like, brings a wagon load of low and brow yes. to his friend and his friend's wife. <laughs> Uh, to thank them for something. Yeah. And <laughs> there's just an air of some stuff might happen. Yeah. Like Once they get to low and brow. There's them. possibilities. Let's yeah. just put it like that. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, hey, yeah. that's 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 part of the American dream, I guess. I don't know. That That's sort of, but all these commercials are like that middle class kind of, like like Dolan and his crew, it, they're in an urban setting, but I think we're thinking of them as, as, living suburban lives yeah. like they're not you know in a brownstone and they're they got you know houses uh with a two-car garages out in the suburbs or something like yeah. that even back then but yeah and and dolan told them what neighborhood to buy in yeah that's right <laughs> he hooked them up with his realtor listen newark is going down yeah. the toilet. <laughs> Get a little further south yeah it's a little bit longer ride commute we can carpool, we could take the train, whatever, but, uh, you know, yeah. they got good houses. Yeah, they do. I mean... They got a good little town. Yeah. You could maybe have a swimming pool. Yeah. It was a... You know. What a ride while it lasts, huh? Yeah. You know, even in the 70s when, you know, things weren't going so well, 1977 when this ad was, but, you know, despite oil shocks and yeah. inflation, these guys still have enough money and, and they're comfortable enough to go to during the middle of the week to a basketball game out to get a nice dinner, some, yep. some low and brow... That's probably one of the reasons Lone Brow was, you know, a special treat because the, the the inflation and stuff. Yeah. Like normally it would just be their beer, but the, they got to kind of hold off because. Yeah. It's important. Yeah, probably on the weekends they're not necessarily you know chugging Lone Brows in their backyards. No. You know, across the fence like talking to each other. They, they're saving it for a night out. That's what makes this such a unique special combination yeah. that Dolan's hit on here. Right, and every once in a while, like Dolan has some stashed. Yeah. He's got you know. He's got that refrigerator in the garage. Yeah. And every totally. now and then he's like, hey. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's get a loan, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. I'll show you, because he can fix his car, too. Yeah. He's every, got a car. He, he can fix it. Right. He'll be tinkering tinkering yeah. with his car sometimes out right. of the garage. Yeah. And, and maybe, like, one of the guys has to come over to help him. He needs a second pair of hands. Yeah. You know. And he makes it worth his while. Yeah. And then they just, they like, sit right. at the foot of the garage. And, yeah. Have their low and brow. Just cracking open that low and brow. Yeah, maybe a cigar. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yeah, here's to good friends. Tonight is kind of special. Like I said, I was I was too young to appreciate that kind of America, and maybe it never even existed. But yeah. I'd like to think that it did, and that's why I love this ad. It, it just takes me back to this specific, takes me to this specific time and place in America, and, and I think something that we'd all like to like to have, you know. Maybe you're not into basketball. Maybe you're not into steak specifically, but there's something more to it. It just suggests something. Just being able to do this kind of thing. It's special. It's kind of special. It's very special. <laughs> it's, it's, well, yeah. It's, it's low and brow. It's kind of special. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, Dolan may have elevated it from kind of special to, you know, perfection with just that one order. Because he's a genius. He is. Join us next time for another exciting episode of Battle of the Network Shows. Learn more, leave feedback, and suggest future episodes at battleofthenetworkshows.com. Follow us on Twitter at BatNetShows, and like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Battle of the Network Shows.